On this episode of Retro Car Guy 530, we're going to go over the anatomy of an automotive fuse tap to clear up some misconceptions and make it a little bit easier to install it in your vehicle. Let's get into it. Back in December 2019, I created a video of how to install a fuse tap in your vehicle. I was actually creating a video to review a dash camera at that point, but decided to split that out as a separate video. And th that particular video, I showed you how to use an ATM mini style fuse tap to install into a fuse box, which I have here. Now this concept for fuse tap and orientation applies to all the fuse tap types or fuse types. So this is the ATM mini, which I'll be using in this video again. I have the ATC or ATO, which isn't that prevalent at this point, but I have seen it on occasion, especially in inline fuses to protect accessory devices. And then there's the low profile mini. And then we have the micro two. So any of those blade style fuse taps are what I'm talking about in this particular video. The anatomy of a fuse tap is the same for all of them. As far, and when I refer to anatomy, I refer to the power routing through them that the left leg receives the power, supplies it to both left sides of the fuse sockets, and then the fuse then provides power either to the new accessory or the original circuit in the fuse box. So let's uh, go into that a little bit. So let me switch over to my demonstration fuse tap and we'll get testing that right now. I set up my multimeter for ohm checking, continuity checking. So when I touch the two leads together, we have the multimeter go to near zero. I know this is going to be a little blurry because I have the fuse tap itself in focus here. And I'm going to use the leads here. I'm going to use the red for my power source in theory, and then prove where the power does and does not go based on the left and right legs of the fuse tap. So let's say I'm supplying power to the left leg. And I'm going to try to keep out of the way of the multimeter here. You can see that I have continuity to the lower fuse socket left section. I have continuity as well to the upper fuse socket left section, left side. Now, if we go to the other sides, there should be absolutely none because there's nothing connecting the left and right sides here because these are not actual fuses, just using them for testing purposes. So you can see that the left leg has continuity to the left sides of both fuse sockets in the fuse tap. Whereas the right leg only has continuity to the lower right fuse socket. You can see there's continuity there, and but there's no continuity to the upper or the other side of that same fuse socket. So the right leg only has cut connectivity to the lower fuse socket right side. So power must come in the left side here, be routed up to both, make available to both fuse sockets and then out through the fuse to the new accessory or to the original circuit if there was a fuse in the fuse box fuse socket. If there was no fuse in the fuse box fuse socket, this lower fuse should not be here. As you can see, the power will still go up the left leg to the left side here and through the fuse for the new accessory without the fuse being in the bottom fuse socket. So that proves the continuity, thus the anatomy of a fuse tap. And you must get the left leg installed into the side of the fuse socket that provides the power. And that way you don't overload the bottom fuse. So let's go through that example where we're providing power here. Power is available to this side of this fuse. And then it goes through this fuse and is made available to the top and the original uh, fuse socket leg, this left leg. So that puts all power demands through the lower fuse, which is incorrect. Let's say they're both five amps and they both draw, let's say four amps at startup. And that way you've got four amps going to the original circuit, whatever that might be. And then an additional four amps going to the new accessory. And if this is a five amp fuse, you've now exceeded that and it's going to blow this fuse. So if you repeatedly blow the lower fuse here, the reason is the fuse tap is installed incorrectly. It's 180 degrees from the proper orientation in the fuse socket. You've got the power coming up the right leg instead of the left leg. So in that example where they're both five amps, basically you would have potentially up to 10 amps being drawn up by the left leg made available to each fuse socket. So five amps or startup four amps goes through the lower fuse to the original circuit and then 
potentially four amps, let's say at startup to the new accessory. That way you don't blow either fuse because both are capable of supplying that power and assuming that the fuse socket is capable of providing that power as well. So that's why it's important to get the fuse tap installed correctly. I'm now going to show you the quicker and easier way to verify the installation of the fuse tap in the correct orientation in the fuse box fuse socket by using the fuse tap itself and only with the one fuse on the top of the fuse tap. So the bottom fuse socket is empty. We're going to make sure that the power is coming as we saw in the previous section. The anatomy of the fuse tap here, the power has to come in the left leg to go up to the left side here to get to this fuse and then out if it's properly installed. So in this particular case, I have a power supply to this fuse box that I've used in my previous video, and I got it set up to be supplying 12.40 volts, up to two amps, and right now it's supplying nothing. I'll press the output button here and verify that my multimeter is set up correctly, and we can see that we're getting voltage here. 12.43 according to that multimeter, and that way I can prove that the power is coming through this in the correct orientation. I have a fuse box fuse socket here, which I know that this side is the side supplying power. So I'm gonna insert this so that the right leg of the fuse tap is installed into that side of it. And we should see no power. And in that case, no power. Then if we reverse that, where we have the left leg going into that side, we should have power. And we do. So that by itself is a way to verify that the fuse tap is installed in the correct orientation. Left leg is supplied power through the fuse and then out to the accessory wire. That way uh, you are, are assured that you're not overtaxing the original fuse, if any. Again, if the original fuse socket had no fuse, there should never be a fuse in the fuse tap fuse socket on the lower end here. So if there was a fuse, yes. If there was no fuse here originally, no fuse here. So with that, I hope you found that this is informational and you um, gained some knowledge from it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos to the channel. Check out the, or leave a comment and question down in the comment section and check out the description section for any additional information and ways to support the channel. See you next time.